Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time to share with you what happened today in history. I'm going back to a time when a lot of us weren't born, 1911. And it's something called the Shirt Waste Fire Disaster. It uh, led to the loss of about 146 lives uh, back then in the United States. And that's where we start from this morning. And there's a very, very um, important a part of this that I want to share, very, very um, close to something we've spoken about on the show in the past. Um, it is one of the darkest moments of America's industrial history. It's, uh, the Triangle Shirt Waste Company factory in uh, New York burnt down and, of course, led to the, the death of 146 workers on this day, 25th of March, 1911. The tragedy led to the development of a series of laws and regulations that better protected the safety of factory workers. The Triangle Factory was owned by Max Blanc and uh, Isaac Harris and was located at the top three floors of a 10-story building in downtown uh, Manhattan. It was a sweatshop in every sense of the word, at a, and at the time of the fire, there were four elevators with access to the factory floors, but only one was fully operational and could hold only 12 people at a time. Really sad. Um, of course, uh, the Triangle Factory was twice scorched in 1902, while their Diamond Waste Company factory burned twice. I'm not sure if Blank and Harris um, 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 were cursed from someplace, uh, why their buildings or their businesses were always getting uh, burnt. It seems like you know they deliberately touched their uh, workplaces before business hours in order to collect on the large fire insurance policies that they purchased. At the time that this event uh, took place, there were 600 workers at the factory when the fire broke out on the eighth floor. Elevator broke down, and of course, it was difficult getting people out of the building. Um, eventually, 146 of their workers lost their lives on that day. So this is the point that I want to reach out, um, I want to make you know, from the story. The, one of the things that I mentioned, it says that the tragedy led to the development of a series of laws and regulations that better protected the safety of factory workers. Um, if you also remember the, I think it was Grenfell Tower, um, that's in the UK. Um, it was one of the things that was questioned a lot the safety um, regulations for you know buildings like that and why uh, you know the, 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 the you know that one failed basically um, questions were asked about the building safety um, you know years earlier questions were asked about you know who was meant to ensure that the building was safe for um, inhabitants um, those questions were very very legitimate questions and um, you know you you can also follow up to see what changed um, with the UK building um, policies also in the United States, and from this story, you know, it says that you know, new policies were brought um, to protect safety of uh, factory workers. Last week, I think it was early this week, we spoke, uh, early this week actually, we spoke about the Katsina Market Fire. One of the things that I mentioned that the, on that day was the lack of these type of questions when a disaster like that happens in Nigeria. In what ways have we redesigned our marketplaces in Nigeria to ensure that an incident like this will never happen or you know that lives can be saved or that fire trucks can get into the markets easier to um, put out a fire it doesn't seem like a lot changes in nigeria and that's that's what i wanted to point out so between 1911 when this happened there's definitely been new laws with regards factory fires in the mm -hmm. united states new laws with regards building you know policies safety policies for buildings in the united states mm -hmm. but i don't see a lot of that happening here in nigeria until the next market fire I think I really agree with E.I. Chok early on of the press when he said, for manifestos, we don't want to hear you say, I'm going to build roads, I'm going to build this. You need to ask us what we want. We yes. need in better infrastructure for places like our markets, such that if, if there's a fire outbreak, there should be fire extinguishers, there should be exit points, there should be things like this provided to make sure that lives are saved, at least if not properties. Absolutely. Yes. Moving on to today in history, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, was born. She was born this day, March 21st, uh, March 25th, 1942. I remember when she passed on in 2018. It was a very sad day, you know, doing uh, mini docus about her life as the Queen of Soul, her musical prowess, her civil rights activism, her multi-talented nature as a pianist, and just everything she represented as a mother, as a singer, as an advocate, Aretha Franklin was the real deal. You know, she was born this day in history, March 25th, 1942. 
Uh, she was American. She began her career as a child singing gospel at a church called the New Bethel Baptist Church. And it was when she was 18 years old, you know, I mentioned she had been singing, you know, gospel yeah. in the church. But it was when she turned 18 that she embarked on a, you know, secular music career as a recording artist for Colombian Records. So at such a young age, with such a powerful voice, she had already been, I would say, headhunted. And she had been signed to record it. But, you know, we talked about the Ugo Guchuku yesterday, or, or yes. Monday, signed by McLaren Racing, British Racing Company, you know, at 13. So Aretha uh, was a child, child star. You know, she recorded 112 charted songs, sing, singles on billboards. Her songs were records. Her songs were hits. Her songs topped the charts. She was just phenomenal. She was, she was everything and more. How one of one of her favorite songs from me is R E S P C T. Permits my terrible sing it. voice. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead but and you sing know, it. <laughs> you know, Aretha Franklin. You know, you know that song. You know, she demanded respect and she got it. When she passed away in 2018, it was it was it was a time of global mourning. We saw you know remarkable people like President Barack Obama, you know, just sympathizing with her family. And yes, even recently, just two days ago. A biopic about her, you know, a film, a, dramat a dramatization about her life, you know, to be shown on National um, Historic. Yeah, I think that's it. But there's a, there's a TV channel in the U.S., um, National Geographic in the U.S., did a dramatization of film about her life. But her family is saying they did not get permission to film this, you know, this movie. Arthur Franklin's family is rejecting this, uh, and her daughter here is saying, as the immediate family, we feel that it's important to be involved with any biopic of my grandma's life, as it's hard to get any accurate de depiction of anyone's life without speaking to the ones closest to them. But this, this film company, and National Geographic said, they actually got all the, all the you know, permission required right. to film this, and they had, that they had been filming this even before she died of pancreatic cancer in 2018. So this is something that is ongoing now. They're protesting this on social media, but the movie is anyway built to be shown on the big screen uh, later this year. That, you know, that's where we are with Aretha Franklin. But she was born this day in history in 1942. Um, very interesting. And um, just to quickly say that you, you really cannot, you know, talk about black history and black music without certain names. They're names that, you know, will forever, you know, and ever mm -hmm. continue to be um, a part of black history, there'll be a part of, you know, the, the, you know, little details here and there that constitute, you know, the black movement and, um, you know, the, the contributions of black people to the music industry. Um, Aretha Fl Franklin, Diana Ross, Chaka Khan, um, uh, Patti LaBelle, Whitney Houston, you know, a lot later, mm -hmm. the Beyonce's of uh, today and, um, you know, Etta, Etta James, there's, there's so many of these names, Donna Summers, Dionne Warwick. Um, let's, let's not forget Amanda Gorman. Absolutely. Yes, so the youngest ever poet to perform at a presidential inauguration. She's so, black and she made us proud. So, so these are, you know, some of the names that would forever be um, entirely relevant with regards to black history conversations and black music and the contributions to black music also. Indeed. Columbia Records also, um, absolutely. Yes. All right. That's what we have for you today. Today in uh, history, uh, March 25th, 1911 and 1942. Happy birthday, posthumous birthday to Aretha Franklin. And of course, we spoke about a, a, a fire at a factory in New York in 1911. Short break when we come back. It is World Tuberculosis Day. And we're going to be speaking with a, a healthcare pr um, practitioner uh, to share what that means, what we should be celebrating today, and what you know we are dealing with here in Nigeria with, with regards to uh, tuberculosis. It is one of those diseases that is you know, scarcely spoken about. And uh, the theme for this year's World Tuberculosis Day is the clock is ticking. We'll talk about it when we come back. <laughs> 